Hello, everybody. Welcome back to another thrilling episode of Mr. Donuts' awesome math network. I am your host, Mr. Donuts. A big shout out right off the bat to my classes 705, 706, and 707. I miss you guys dearly. I miss Miss Morin. I miss Miss Terry. And I miss all the 363, MS363 family. All right. Let's get to it. Today's lesson is uh, based on the feedback I've been receiving from my classes on on Google Classroom. And it's gonna be a refresher on using tape diagrams and relationship to equations. So let's get right to it, shall we? Today's criteria for success. You will know you are successful if you can write an equation in multiple ways, all right? An equation is, is, is talks about equivalency and there's lots of different ways we can measure equivalency. As long as we're att you know, attaining the goal of identifying an unknown value, all right? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna focus on two questions, one from the practice problems in lesson three and one from the practice problems in lesson four, okay? Please excuse my hair, it's Friday. So while I'm filming this on a Friday, I don't know when you're watching it, and in my academy on Fridays, we get to uh, have a dress down day. So I'll let my hair down a little bit, okay? Also, in honor of Air Max Day, which was March 26, we got some Air Maxes behind us. Two sets of anniversary ones, and those are the Missing Link Susans, which are pretty awesome. And on my feet today, I have my ooh, pull a muscle, my Air Max Deluxes, all right? They got a lot going on. I like when a lot's going on. It's just like math. Math is great when there's a lot going on, as long as you can make it and organize it in a way that makes sense for you. Okay, so let's get right to it, all right? So... Practice problem from lesson three, number four. Select all the equations that match the tape diagram. So if you watch the first two videos, uh, tape diagrams and hanger diagrams are ways to uh, help us find unknown values, right? And I apologize, I'm still playing around with the camera work. This is still pretty new to me. So thanks for your patience, all right? Um, we're given a bunch of equations that we could use to solve, but uh, I don't think it'll hurt us if we try to make our own equation to start with, all right? So let's get our highlighter going. I'm going to use yellow to highlight numbers that aren't associated with variables in this instance. The number is 35 and the number is 8. Let's recall, okay, I'm going to use purple, that this bar above, okay, is what signifies the equivalency, okay? So we're saying that the 35, everything that the 35 is holding underneath it is going to be equal to it, okay? So 35 is equal to everything in the tape diagram. And then we're gonna use Tiffany Blue for these Xs. Uh, if you watched video number two, the question isn't how many variables there are. That can be a little misleading of a question. It's a twofold question. What is represented or what is the variable that they're using and how many times does it show up? It's a much clearer way of thinking. And the variable is X and it shows up one, two, three, four, five, six times. So how can we write that out? Well, let's keep it simple first. Let's uh, let's write it basic addition. Let's, why not? Um, we could say that 35, equals eight plus one, two, three, four, five, six X's, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. And I'll put my addition sign in between them. Five. Well, does that look like any equation that we have up there that they're asking us to match with? Did you say A? You're right. Let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And we have our eight and our 35. So A is direct replica, replication, no fabrication of the equation that we wrote to start. Now, this goes out to my eighth graders too. This is taught at the end of seventh grade, but it's a big eighth grade standard as well. And just in algebra in general, can we combine any like terms? What is a like term? A like term is a number that has uh, or a term that has a consistent uh, variable and or exponent. Right? There's no exponents here, just X. 
How many times did we see x? We saw x six times. So we wanted to simplify terms. We could write this as 35 equals 8 plus 6x. And what do you know? That matches b. Let's look at c. We have 6 plus 8x equals 35. Well, how many times did X show up? If my mic is dope, right? I like my mic. A rubber pump. It showed up six times. Not eight. Six. So this doesn't work. This equation doesn't work. Next equation, 6X plus 8 equals 35. Well, what's different about this one compared to the first ones we made or the ones we made? 35 is on the right side of the equation. And... That's okay, as long as it makes sense. Well, how do I say this? Well, for this one, are the terms that are now on the left consistent with the original equation we made? And in other words, would it still be balanced based on our original tape diagram? Well, we know there's 6x. We've seen that in one, two, three, four different instances. Five, really, if you count the tape diagram. We see 8 and we see 35. So D also works. Okay. E, 6x plus 8x equals 35x. That's a lot of x. That's too much x. That's a lot of x. It's only 6x when we started. Look at the camera. Camera 1, camera 2. Camera 1, camera 2. 6x plus 8x equals 14x and then 14x equals 35x. We can get into a lot of different, more complicated uh, information with that, about that. But if we want to keep it to the question, that does not match the tape diagram. And the tape diagram only shows X six times, not 14 times, not 11 D times, just six times. So E doesn't work. Last, but certainly not least, we have F. 35 minus 8 equals 6X. Interesting. Let's try to see, let's see if we can understand, or, or or actually, use a word I like to use a lot. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. I'm gonna rewrite my equation next to this. Is that clear? It's kind of messy, I apologize. Clean that up again. Eight. So what I want you guys to think is, what is the relationship? What could possibly be going on in the relationship between this equation that gave us and this equation that we have? I mean, the idea of an equation is to help us solve an unknown value, in this instance, x. And when solving for an unknown value, we have to isolate the variable. And there's several steps for that. The first step being asking ourselves, is there any addition or subtraction that can happen? And in this instance, is this is a positive 8 or being added 8. Remember, I could flip them. It'd be 6x plus 8. Um, if I took away 8 from both sides, I would start the process of getting 6x alone. And I'm a big fan of showing work. So what I'm going to do is when I'm actually going to write out what this really means. And what this is really saying is I'm going to subtract 8 from both sides. If I subtract 8 from here, it leaves me with 6x. If I wanted to write out the process as clear as possible and I wanted someone to really see what my mind was doing, I would write it out as 35 minus 8 equals 6x. And that is why this last equation here matches the tape diagram. Because we are subtracting 8 from both sides. I'm going to show it to you one more way. Just once. It's a good go-to joke. My kids love it. Miss you guys. Um, I go back up here. And I was in the process. Okay, let's erase all this other busy stuff right here. I was in the process of solving this tape diagram. One of the first things I would probably work with is getting this 8 off. I can work towards finding what x is, and that would involve me subtracting 8 from both sides. And again, what we're saying here is 35 minus 8 equals these six instances of x. And that is why f is also an equivalent equation, all right? 
So just to recap, okay, to give you the quote unquote answers. Um, remember, the answer is an important, the process is important. A works, B works, C doesn't work, D works, E doesn't work, F works. If you want to go back, maybe I made a mistake. Sometimes I do make mistakes. I'm human. I'm not a math math machine. Okay, machina. All right. Let's go to this last question, and then we'll be done for today's lesson or today's recap. Here's a diagram and its corresponding equations. Find the solution to the equation and explain your reasoning. All right. I'm back up a little bit. I'm gonna zoom in. Now here they gave us the diagram and the equation. They didn't let us do our own thinking, which I don't really love. They weren't the real Mr. Nice there. So what we're going to do to make them happy is we're going to solve this equation first. And how do we go about doing that? We're going to throw some algebra in here. Okay, so we have 6x plus 11. First thing I would suggest to do is to subtract 11 from both sides, okay? I'm gonna subtract 11 from this side as well. My eighth graders that may be watching, this is directly related to you. This is a way they really show you how to solve things algebraically. Remember, there's not a one size fits all. 6x, 21 minus 11 is 10, right? So up here we asked, do we have to add or subtract? We had to subtract. Now in here we're gonna say, do we divide or multiply? 6x is multiplication. The inverse of multiplication is division. We're gonna divide both sides by six. Six cancels out. I don't have a calculator on me right now. Uh, all parents out there, calculators are not cheating. After seventh grade, you're encouraged to use a calculator. It's very helpful. But for that, if you want to use it to check your work, that's cool too. A calculator is not cheating, okay? It's not. Trust me. I'm going to just solve this uh, on my own. I'm going to go over here. I'm going to make my little think box. Yesterday, I talked, I've talked. i talked about think boxes a few times. I apologize if I didn't explain them. Think box is just a way to organize your thinking in a way where it can still be on the paper so you can reference it. But it, a, a lot of times in my experience, I see people do a lot of like do uh, scrap paper work and then they have this big, beautiful uh, piece of scrap paper and they don't know what they did. So think boxes are just ways to kind of organize your thinking so you can look back at them. So I'm going to go over here, 10 over 6. This reduces because they're both even numbers. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 6 divided by 2 is 3. I have an improper fraction that I'm going to convert to a mixed number. Okay, I'm going to have a lesson on that too soon. Um, I keep the denominator of 3. 3 goes into 5 once with the remainder of 2. So x is 1 and 2 thirds. If you leave it in decimal form, it's going to give you 1.667 repeating decimal. So um, I hope my students remember, I hope you remember that uh, fraction or decimal uh, such as 0 0.67 is uh, 2 thirds. So there you have it for these first two questions. Um, oh, I almost forgot. Let's check that with the tape diagram. Okay, here. I would subtract 11 from both sides. Or from the top and the bottom gives me 10. And what I'm saying is now this piece right here that's left over is equal to 10. And I'm literally saying that all these x's, these 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, right? And if I did 10 divided by 6, I would also get um, 1 and 2 thirds. 6 goes into 10 once with remainder 4, 4 over 6, 2 thirds. So there you have it. Okay, that's our recap on lessons 3 and 4. Um, starting next week, we will continue through our, our lessons, okay? I'll be putting up a video every day, every day, so you guys can follow along and answer questions. If you have any questions, problems, or suggestions, please let me know. For example, I was told that I touch my face a lot. I didn't realize that. Um, and that I don't look at the camera, so I'm trying. Anything else? 
Do you have requests for sneakers you want to see behind me? I mean, I'm here. I see what I got in the stash. All right. Before I go, just want to remind you guys to please you know, stay in touch with each other as much as possible. Send each other emails, send each other funny videos, just positive, positive stuff, positive thoughts. Um, miss you guys. Love you guys. It's not the same, but we're making the best of it. And that's that's all we can do at this point. So I'm Mr. Donis. I hope you learned a lot from this video. Please share it. And um, like I said, still taking requests. Say peace out, RoboCop. Peace out.